Ground sloths, as a whole, were very unique animals, some being fairly small and looking like fairly typical sloths, as would be expected, but they were most definitely quite the diverse group, surviving for around 35 million years until very recently in the Holocene, with them being elephant-sized, burrowers, and some even being aquatic. Their diversity in genera is also now accompanied by a potential dietary range that's while lacking in some areas, could have profound implications for ground sloth niches and their diets. A recent paper published just this year, led by researchers at the American Museum of Natural History, suggested that Mylodon or Darwin's ground sloths that lived in South America until around 10,000 years ago were not strict herbivores like their living and extinct relatives, instead being assessed as being either sporadically or occasionally omnivorous. To gain some further background information on the central animal of this video being Mylodon, it is worth considering their anatomy and habitation, which could very well lead more into this hypothesis being supported. While the six living sloth species are all relatively small plant-eating tree dwellers restricted to the tropical forests of Central and South America, 80 plus genera of fossil sloths, some as mentioned being as large as elephants, once ranged landscapes from Alaska to the southern tip of South America. Mylodon darwini was one of these larger animals, being thought of weighs between 1 and 2 tons, and being around 10 feet in length, and being mainly distributed in the southern parts of South America. Fossils have been found from Argentina, Chile, Bolivia, Uruguay and Brazil, with their southern limits appearing to be around 53 degrees southern latitude. During the last glacial period, these environments were generally even colder and drier than today, and as indicated from remarkable finds of their integument, possessed thick coats with long hair that can be interpreted as an adaptation to a life under these cold climatic conditions. As well as this, studies have shown that their diets, at least in southwestern Patagonia, consisted almost exclusively of grasses, as pollen analysis has shown that the landscape of the time was tundra-like in character, and was therefore almost free of trees, with only a few low bushes being common. The widespread distribution in pampas regions, as well as some features of the skull, does however indicate that they had a much larger ecological range, and could also cope with warmer temperature conditions and more mixed diets. A key feature most unusual in many mammals that they possessed is the closed nasal arch, which is heavily roughened in its front area, and therefore would have offered them muscle attachment points for a more mobile and ossified upper lip. While mylodon coprolites have been found that suggest that they did consume woody grass materials, Consistent with the long-standing view that they were as a whole herbivorous, the ability to gain insights into the range of diets of these animals may have had in life proved to be a key catalyst to the study that will be discussed. To gain a more complete picture, the study used an approach based on nitrogen isotopes locked into specific amino acids to assess the different proportions in the food consumed in a selected group of animals, utilising hair and other keratinous tissues like fingernails, as well as collagen found in teeth and bones. By analysing the amino acids and nitrogen values in a range of modern herbivores and omnivores to determine a clear signal of eating a mix of plants and animal foods, the fossils of Mylodon and other related genera could then be measured alongside them to better assess their own diets. This allowed the paleontologists to determine the trophic levels of a variety of known extant animals as well as extinct forms, assessing samples from two extinct sloths, five extant Xenarthran species under controlled feeding conditions, as well as eight known omnivorous species. The two sloths assessed were Nothrotheriops shastensis, as well as the previously mentioned Mylodon. Their trophic levels indicated that while the Shasta ground sloths were found to be obligate herbivores, with no evidence of any form of omnivory, the data indicated and plotted Mylodon as omnivorous, at least opportunistically, being at a high trophic position comparing close to the American Martin. The traditional consensus that fossil sloths were all obligate herbivores like their modern relatives is based mostly on the cranial morphology and shared phylogenetic dietary adaptations across the group. Their dental structure, however, does not preclude the ingestion of foods that require little to no preparation, as in certain kinds of scavenging, the ingestion of soft tissues involves minimal or no chewing. Furthermore, their extremely high diversity over the time they were around as well as their broad range, suggest that at least some of them may have been quite a lot more versatile ecologically than traditionally thought of. The isotopic results from the evidence of the food consumed is also supported by studies conducted on their muscle structure, biometrics and morphogeometry for the genus, which indicated they would have been less efficient at processing food relative to other mammalian herbivores. However, some criticisms have been raised over the results of the paper, as it utilised nitrogen for testing by itself, and excluded carbon testing, which may leave gaps in the results and for the overall picture. 
It has also been suggested that their diets would have varied between different populations, with the more northern populations that lived in more mild conditions perhaps being less inclined to consume meat, due to more abundant resources. There has also been an isotope study done before this one that showed that animals like Megatherium and Eremotherium were fully herbivorous, although even these animals may have some evidence that goes against this conclusion. An example of osteophagy where an animal will supplement their diets for phosphorus and calcium from bones, something observed in many extant animals like giraffes and cows, has perhaps been found in the case of Megatherium, where the fragmentary rib of either a mastodon or another ground sloth was found with tooth marks, indicating that some ground sloths did indeed do this as well, even ones known to be herbivorous. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.